everyone. That was almost perfect pronunciation, I would say, so uh, thanks for that. First time I heard like that. But uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm super happy to be here on this stage today. And to be honest, it's not so often to play an expert for nine minutes. This is the time that we are getting. So if I will make any mistake in English, pretend that it's part of the show, OK? So let, let's start. For those who don't know me, uh, I flew here from Warsaw, from Poland. And I have more than 10 years experience in, in banking, in finance, in digital, uh, in digital banking. And uh, fact, fact about me, uh, when I received last year uh, an email from Stanford staff that I finished the program, four uh, hours later my son was born. And since then, I'm also a part-time horse. So uh, this is my additional uh, job. Uh, so I jumped from lead to being a parent. So let's start with this big word, innovation. How many of, of your companies have innovation in their strategies? Probably most of you, right? But what really doesn't mean innovation? For each person, it's something different, right? So my question is, if you need to be the first, do you need to be an innovative company to win the market? And I dare to say that it's not always the precondition to win the market. So I will give you a couple of examples. And what is innovation, for example, in the industry that I work for? And there's a lot of fintech companies that are saying that they are innovative. But for me, there were only four, in, four innovations in, in finance. First one, it was hard cash, which replaced the bar uh, exchanging uh, system, right? Bartender. Then there were cards who replaced the hard cash. The third one, it was the mobile banking and digital money that replaced the cards. And the fourth innovation, it's still questionable, it's crypto. So we have four really big innovations in, in payments, right? So if you are not an innovative company, what you can do? And there is this saying that you should create a new category within existing trend. So what does it mean, creation of the new category? I will give you a couple of examples. The first one, Red Bull. Famous drink for all the students, right? So not many people know that before the pandemic hit in 2020, Red Bull captured more than 70% of the energy drink market. And Red Bull wasn't the first energy drink on the market, right? But the Red Bull now, it's a synonym of energy drink. Another example, Apple. 13 years after they uh, released uh, iPhone, they captured more than 65% of the market value of touch screen phones. And of course, iPhone wasn't the first smartphone, to be honest. They create a category of smartphones, to be honest, with an iPhone. And again, they weren't the first ones, right? The third example is Airbnb. And again, just before the pandemic, because pandemic changed a lot, and, uh, Airbnb has a staggering 91% share of peer-to-peer -peer lodging category, right? And guess what? People were renting their apartments before Airbnb came to the market. So again, those three examples that I am showing, they were not first on the market with their services. They changed something what was already existing. They match the big trend and they win the market. They create a category and make it more popular, right? So I like to call those companies a category kings. And the category kings, they became also a synonym of the category they create. Uh, we say we go for a Starbucks coffee. We may end up in other coffee place, but we go for Starbucks. Let's have a Netflix night. I can end up on Disney Plus, Hulu, or anywhere else, but the synonym of streaming, it's Netflix, right? The same can be with any other. Let's, I Google it. Not necessarily I use Google to search. It's a general term for searching on the web, right? So uh, I am bringing also one example from my country, from Poland, the company that I am working for. It's called Blick. It's a mobile payment. It's quite similar to Venmo that you have in States. And we launched in uh, like seven years ago in 2015. And it's an account to account mobile payment system. And you can imagine, okay, money transfer existed before that, right? But after seven years, every, more than every second transaction in Poland between mobile devices are on us. So again, we weren't the first ones but we create a category of mobile payments. So people, when they send money, like in States, they said Venmo, this money to me, we said Blick it to me, right? So again, we create a category within existing trend. So what is important uh, to underline that people mix category creation with first mover advantage. 
right? So category creation, you don't need to be the first. You don't need to bring brand new things to the market. You need to make it smart in different way than others, right? So a couple of examples, iPod. Maybe some of you still remember it. It wasn't the first MP3 player, but it became super popular when the iPod came to the market. Again, Apple wasn't the first, right? Another example, Facebook. It wasn't the first, the most popular social network. Now Facebook is somehow fading, but it is a synonym of the social network. Friendster was before, MySpace was before, right? They took it a lot of from them, and they made it in different way. They created a category of social network, right? Again, Dell. Many people think that the first personal computer was put together by Dell, and there's a lot of different companies that they did it before, right? So coming back to the example from Poland about Bleak, how you create the new category within existing trend. And what we did with mobile payments, as an example, we saw three different things that we addressed. First, heavily fragmented ecosystem. So you go to the checkout online, you, say, you see so many different payment methods, right? You pay different online, differently in the shop, differently at ATM. We cover that. Uh, there's excessive amount of applications on your devices, right? You need to download Venmo, you need to download PayPal, and so on. Like, you have too many of them on your devices. And then, of course, there's no system that is immune to the, to the security breaches, right? So creating a new app, it means that you need to build the trust from scratch. So what we did and what we saw that the payment fragmentation is a new normal, right? So people have problem with choosing the right payment method. And also for the merchants, it's also problematic to find which method they should accept, right? So what we did, and you look at this, this is bleak. It's just a six-digit code. It's temporary code for payment initiation, right? Inside the mobile banking app. And you think, is it innovative? I dare to say it's not, and I work there, right? For many people it is, but it's super simple. It, you just re rewrite this code on the POS terminal, ATM, or online, right? And this code is serving more than half of mobile payment transactions in Poland, right? And you had those mobile transactions before. So what we did? It's completely embedded, so you don't need to download additional app. It's inside your mobile banking app that you already have on your phone. There's no steps to register because we don't create additional account. We are reusing the account that it's already done inside your mobile banking app. Plus, it's a seamless user experience because user doesn't need to learn the new interface to use it. So what is the scale right now of, of our, our company? Like imagine 10 friends that they are using mobile banking apps, right? And in Poland, six of them are using Blick. And again, it wasn't the first mobile payment method in Poland, but we did it differently than others, right? And we leverage already existing clearing house. So for many people, they call it an innovation, but if you are in the industry and you will see every other country have a similar uh, solution, right? So if you think also about online payments, every second transaction is on us. It's of course, it's not a scale of Apple or Airbnb or Red Bull, but within Poland, we are a category makers. Thanks to us, my grandmother knows about Bleak, my parents know about this, and my friends also. And what I want to say within those ending nine minutes, I want to come back and all of you come back home and think that you don't need to be the first. You don't need to be the most innovative. You don't need to bring totally new things. You don't need to kill yourself to find the things that they don't exist. Maybe there's some kind of gap on the market within the existing mega trend that you can address differently and they can win the market. And there are a lot of other examples. So let's make new categories and I hope many of you will create and those are the contact details. Thanks a lot.